for a while. Get the mud cleaned off you. Did anyone do the run this morning? Yeah? How'd that do go? Everyone finish? All right, we're going to start out with some singing, so why don't you stand up and we'll sing together, giving our thanks to God. Verses 1 through 7. 
Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his for he has made it and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care.
There's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you.
seat. You may be seated. Right. Last year I started a story about the missing piece of strawberry rhubarb mm. pie uh, that was made by Grandma Ruth, Grandma Ruth Design. Uh, if you weren't here, uh, we had a story back to my first church 30-some years ago. And this church is about an hour and a half north of here. And uh, they had their Thanksgiving service in July close to the 4th of July, the closest Sunday, closest to July, because that way you could have it outside. And they had it outside on the uh, parsonage lawn. There was the church, and then there was the house that we got to live in right next to the church. And so they had it on the lawn, and there would be a table uh, with all the food. And I explained last year how country churches do potlucks a little bit differently than most city churches. I'm not saying, you know, that, that Pathway is guilty of this or anything, but in city churches, when there's a potluck, people generally remember that there's a potluck the day before at some point, and they go, oh no, it's the potluck, and then they whip something together and they bring it. In the country church, they know when the potluck is, they've been looking forward to it for months, because everyone tends to bring their thing. So someone brings the fried chicken, that's what they're known for. Or someone makes the potato salad. They don't go and buy it at Gordon Foods. They make it from scratch. They slice and they dice all the ingredients. So people make their own thing, and everyone knows that this is what they bring, and there's a certain amount of pride to what you bring. And uh, especially the pie table. The pie table was separate from all the other tables. The pie table was off to the side. And uh, we just ate the other food, but the pies actually got judged. So I told you about Hilda Venema, who was in charge of the pie table. I told you about her uh, husband, Wayne. And uh, I told you about uh, um, Grandma Ruth's pie. I told you that she was from the Bazine clan. I told you about her husband, Harold, and I told you about her brother-in-law, Bob, and the father-in-law, Bob Sr., and then the grandma of one of them, I forget who, Grace. Remember, I told you all those stories, all the different people. Some of them were good people, good characters, and some of them had their issues, and uh, we talked about all of them. Uh, we talked about the Bode boys, remember? The The leading the rebellion of the 9, 10, 11, 12-year-old boys. See, we have some of those here this morning. They were throwing rocks at the bell of the church. The church had this bell up on the steeple, which is still rung today, you know, for the church service to uh, announce the church service. They were throwing rocks at the bell, and so someone had to get them to stop doing that. So I told you all these stories, and then I asked who stole the, who do you think stole the missing piece of strawberry rhubarb pie? And most of you said Pastor Steve, right? And, uh, you know, I, I understand. I like pie. So I can see how that, you'd come to that conclusion. Um, but in my defense, I'm the obvious choice. Okay, so why would I tell a story or be involved in a situation where every, you know, because the people at Highland think just like you, they're going to, they were going to blame me too. So why would I do it knowing that I'm going to get blamed, right? I mean, really, you got to think about, they got to think about this. We're, we're interested in justice here this morning and justice takes its time. So I didn't give you all the possible cul culprits, so I got to tell you about some other people that could be, uh, could be the ones. There was, uh, there was a group of three couples that were nothing but trouble, really. Uh, the Van Polens, uh, the Ferdines, and the Hesslings. Okay, they were kind of a group together, 
In fact, after I left there, whenever we came back, it would be those three couples and their families and so on that we would do things with. And, and uh, because they were a lot of fun, but there was, there was a lot of horsing around and trick, trickery and pulling the wool over people's eyes. That was the kind of thing. They loved doing those kind of prank kinds of things, especially Bilvin Poland. Bilvin Poland was kind of the ring leader. And what he got people to do, especially these two other couples, is to be a part of something in the country called chivalry. Do you know what that is? Yeah, some of you that are out in the country, you know what that is? They, they, it, you find an occasion to go to someone's house, like at 1.30 in the morning or something like that. And uh, Dale Ferdine had this old um, mm, mm, chainsaw, old chainsaw, <laughs> without, without, a, without a muffler on it. So it was really loud. I mean, it was really loud. And uh, Dale Ferdine was kind of a character. Anyway, he was a talker. He was a school teacher, so... Uh, nothing against school teachers, but uh, he, he knew how to tell stories. Uh, he was married to Faye, and they lived in an old stone house, you know, that was made like at the turn of the century. So, the, you know, the whole thing was made out of stone. And then he made a garage to look exactly like it, very detailed, orientated. When you go into their house, it's like going into something that was 100 years ago, the old stove and wood stove and you know it's just it was an incredible thing he was a real storyteller in fact i just talked to him a week ago he wanted to ask one simple question and i look at my phone it's 40 minutes 40 minutes to ask one question so that's dale Ferdine. but he's married to faith and both of them by the way came to faith as adults they came to the church became christians so they weren't raised in it and Fay was one of those who just said it like it was i mean she just if she didn't think something was right, she would just tell you. I mean, she had no, you know, there wasn't this, this idea of being really nice. You, you just say what, what you think. Um, they had five children total. Their first child died at age five of a brain tumor. We, didn't, we never got to know her. When we got there, they had four children then. They had two girls and two boys. And when they had all four, they found out that three out of the four had cystic fibrosis. Uh, and, the, and the outlook for those, at least at that time, was maybe 20 years, 25. The, the longest lastings were like 30 years old. It's a, it's a disease that attacks your immune system and you're, you're getting pneumonia all, of, all the time. Well, both girls died while we were there that, in, that fourth, uh, in that four years. And their youngest one was 12. And I remember going to their house, um, you know, just before she died. And I went up, went up the stairs and, you know, this old house. And you know how some of the upstairs in old houses, the, the, the ceiling is, you know, kind of, you have to dip your head a little bit. And so I sat on the bed and, and her, Faye, the mom, was just pounding her daughter's back, you know, to loosen up the phlegm and so on. And she looked over at me and said, am I doing any good? And I'm like, you know, I was 26 years old. You know, she wondered, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm helping her live longer, but what's the point? And I just looked at her and said, well, you know, I think you just have to do what you feel you have to do. You know, that was my brilliant comment. That's all I could say. She died on Easter morning. So they had, they, had, they had some tough stuff to go through. The oldest one, they had, so they have one child that doesn't have it, and they have the other boy that has it. He's still alive. I mean, he's like 50 years old. It's a miracle. It's unbelievable. It's, uh, uh, but they still have that hanging over their head all the time. Okay, so they have all this tragedy in their life, but Dale and Faye are the funniest. Uh, you know, they buy mopeds. They go mopeding together. They... Uh, they go traveling together. Uh, they're just a lot of fun. And he brings this big, huge, I mean, this is a huge cut down a redwood tree chain, uh, um, mm, mm, chain, chainsaw. That's what it is. With the muffler thing and, and, and no muffler, so it's really loud. So that was Dale's role at the, what was I talking about the chivalry, right? Okay. Uh, then uh, the Hesslinks, Laura, Greg and Laura, 
Laura usually brought the food. You bring food along, and she's a real good organizer. Uh, when we got there, they're about our age, and they joined the young people's thing, and I think they just quit about two years ago. So they've been doing the young people's thing for 30-some years. But when we first got there, we didn't know who they were. The first week we were there, we heard about them. They had a, a little girl, their first child, and she had all kinds of physical problems, and they were down at the... Uh, Ann Arbor at the Michigan uh, uni- uh, hospital thing. And, and we heard they were, they were there like for a week. This little girl had so many surgeries over, the, you know, just like a six-month period, one after another. And, and we heard that they were on the way back. And so we went to McDonald's and we bought a shake and a Big Mac and the fries and the you know, they didn't have little toys back in, the, 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 in that day. But uh, we bought all the stuff, and we brought it over to the... They lived in a trailer at the, that time, and we knocked on the door, and we said, we're your new pastors. You know, and came in, and we had a good time getting to know them. They still talk about that, you know, bringing over the Big Macs uh, to their house. Um, and that little girl, uh, you know, a lot of physical problems over the next several years. But that little girl... It, She'll probably be here. These families will probably be here in a week and a half when we have our concert. But she is a fighter. She still has some issues and so on, but this little girl is a champion, uh, loves God, and just, you know, an incredible, incredible person. So they, they, I was talking about the chivalry, right? So they were bringing the, they were bringing the food. And then Bilvin Poland, yeah, I started with Bilvin Poland. He was, he was the worst one. He was, he was a kind of an interesting guy. Whenever I saw him, I mean, the four years I was there, and then whenever I, we'd come back, he'd always have a question for me. You know, we'd be sitting at the fire, and then he'd go, you know, really, how do we know that the Bible is true? You know, he'd just, he'd ask all these impossible questions, you know. Every time I came there, why is it only the pastor preaches? You know, stuff like that. He would just, whatever he could. And so he was a lot of fun. He, you know, he had good heart. And he had this, <laughs> he had this, I don't know how many of you remember Gunsmoke. Do you remember Gunsmoke Festus? Yep. Festus, <laughs> you know, a, hey, you know, <coughs> kind of a raspy voice with a, <laughs> you know, laugh, kind of thought everything was funny. Uh, and then there's Bill Sr., Bill's dad. And he had that same, he really was, he had that laugh. <laughs> Yo, pastors, do you? <laughs> he'd, he'd come in, and I and I'd never met a happier guy in my life. Usually, uh, you know, a young pastor, 25, 26 years old, comes into a church. He's going to change everything, and all the old people hate him. But Bill Van Poland Sr., he just, he just thought every day was just a, <laughs> come on in, ah, come on in, yeah, shucks, come on in, sit down. You know, he had that kind of thing. Let me show you my rock collection. And then he'd get out his rocks, and he found them on his trips, and he put them in, a, you know, those tumblers that you put stuff in, and you tumble them for like five years, and then they come out all shiny. And then, he, and then he'd make belt buckles, you know, like those big belt buckles, and he'd put one of those, oh, look at my belt buckle. <laughs> you know, and he just, he was a hoot. Anyway, that's Bill's dad, and then Bill... Bill's dad and his mom. Mom was a saint living with this guy. But um, they had two boys, and the older one kind of took over the farm. And when we go up there, we, te- we stayed, a lot of times, we'll stay in the older son's dollhouse. About 15, 20 years ago, everyone up there decided to build little dollhouses in their backyards or in the woods behind their places. Little doll house, you know, put the thing in the little porch and so on. So when we're there, we stay at his doll house in the middle of the woods. And his doll house has a family room and a living room and a kitchen and a bedroom. And it's got a loft with another bedroom in the loft. This is his doll house. So it's, anyway, it's pretty cool. It's like a little cottage. Anyway, that's the older brother. I was talking about Bill Jr. Bill Jr., you know, he had that laugh. He had all those questions. He named every dog he ever owned Lucky. You know why? Because it was Lucky if it was still alive. That's why he named it Lucky. And he was kind of a d- different sort. Well, anyway, 
Delvin Poland was the instigator of most all the pranks that went on up in that area for many, many, many years. He was known for this. And finally, everyone had had, had it with Bill. So they were going to get him back, and it was led by his sister. So you can imagine growing up in this family, the sister decided we're going to get this guy back. So she colluded with Bill's husband, or uh, Bill, Bill Van Polen's wife, Darlene. Now, Darlene, Darlene was the first secretary that Highland ever had. And it happened under my watch. And the only way we could get the secretary is I had to pay half her salary. Because everyone in the church was like, we've existed for 80 years without a, a secretary. Why do we need one now? And I wanted to say, because you people are so much work. But anyway, so Darlene was the first secretary. Now they've had many after. But uh, married to, okay, Bill. So Darlene, sister, everyone's in on this thing. They're, gonna get, they're going to get Bill Van Polen back. So what they, this is what, this, is, this was the plan. So they, uh, Darlene was, was to uh, buy all these special teas and then bring them out just before bedtime and go, hey, we've got to try all these because I want to do this thing. I want, I want to know which tea is the one I should use. And so she kept feeding him tea. And, you know, well, try this one. Oh, I've got to go to bed soon. No, you try this one. And then she'd bring another one. So she made him drink like five cups of tea. Okay, and then he, he went to the bathroom before he went to, to bed. But you know what's going to happen, right? You know, an hour and a half later, it's going to be trouble. So... So they went to bed, and then everyone that was in on this thing came over to his house. Now, what you have to understand is his bedroom is here, but the bathroom is through the living room and past the kitchen. So you got to walk all the way over there. So, so everyone snuck into the house, and they're hiding behind the couches and the doors and everything. And then at 1.30, she woke up, you know, she, she, she knew what was going on. She had a little thing set, and... and and then she just quietly nudged him, you know, just to wake him up a little bit. And then once he was, wa- well, you know, somewhat awake, well, duh, you got to go to the bathroom, right? And he sleeps in his underwear. <laughs> so he gets up and, you know, goes to the door, you know, and now he's got to go through the whole living room. And, you know, you know how it is. You don't want to open your eyes and, you know, you don't want to wake up too much. So he's like... So he gets halfway through the living room, and the lights come on, and everyone jumps up, surprise! And he literally fell to the ground. I mean, in his tidy whiteies on the ground, everyone is laughing, and uh, anyway, they got him back. Anyway, okay, shivering I was talking about. I got to come back to the shivering. Shivering is kind of the same thing. You go to someone's house, they just got married. And they went on their honeymoon, and then they come for their very first night that they're together in their own house. And at like 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning, everyone gets outside their bedroom window. They got the chainsaws, they got the pots, they got the pans, they got anything that makes a lot of noise. And then someone does a count off, and then, and, you know, and the people inside, if they're believers, think it's the second coming. Jesus must be here and... Uh, Shoot, we just got married. Why not wait a year or so? But anyway, here it is. And, uh, and then everyone comes in to your house with food, and it's a party. It doesn't matter whether you've got to get up the next morning and go to work or whatever it is. This is just what we're going to do. So now I tell you this story because these three couples, prankster-type people, and you know I've told stories on them, and I did that back in the day, and, uh, I, you know, I think they have to go on to the suspect role. Uh, and I know, you know, I know you want to know who did it. Um, uh-oh, I'm way too far along. Okay. Kind of ran out of time. We got to, yeah. Well, we're going to have to finish this one next year, so I'm um, sorry. I, uh, I wanted to. Uh, look, you can see the time. And you know what? We've got to do this right. If we're going to do this, right? We don't want to blame someone, you know, that, you know, is, you know we just got, we're just going to have to wait. I think we're going to have to wait. Yeah. Well... 
Maybe uh, next year. <laughs> Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we've come together to give thanks. We've come together to lift your name in song and in praise, and we've uh, gathered this morning to celebrate. We'll, we'll uh, this day uh, spend time with friends and family. We think of those who don't have a place to gather. We pray, Lord, that uh, we, can, we can extend a hand of welcome, uh, and Lord, we pray for your blessing to fill empty places. Uh, there, are, there are places at tables that will be empty this year, and Lord, uh, we pray for you to fill that place uh, that pain. God, we pray that uh, you will give laughter <clears throat> and, and uh, that you will fill us with joy. And remember that you have blessed us with all good things. And this, this year, Lord, uh, we have had a, a difficult year, a divisive year as a nation. And we pray for restoration. We pray for a coming together. We pray for unity. We pray for wisdom. We pray that your people who are called by your name will humble ourselves Turn from our wicked ways, seek your face, and then in, in such a way be a blessing uh, to the nation which we are part of. Remembering that we are citizens of a far-off kingdom, but our king is yet coming, uh, and we represent him. God, we pray that in this uh, uh, season, as we look forward to celebrating your first coming, that we can be ever mindful of the citizenship we have uh, that will be uh, finalized and celebrated in your second coming. And may we be working towards that in a way that invites people in to be a part of that kingdom. God, as we take a moment this morning to bring glory to you by our testimonies, we thank you for the events of this year, the events in our lives where we saw you, where we grew in appreciation for you, for one another. And Lord, as we share these testimonies this morning, we pray that you will be glorified by them. Uh, it's in that spirit we pray for your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of uh, uh, housekeeping things before uh, we uh, begin. We have next week, as was mentioned, the Christmas program, and a lot to happen with that. There are sign-up sheets in the back where you can sign up to be a part of helping out. This uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, a group of us will be getting together at Dave DeCaver's barn, and we'll be building the Christmas float. And we're looking for people. Uh, we filled out these interest surveys uh, at the last uh, GeoBlock meeting. And a number of people said that they liked building, they liked putting things together, they liked problem solving. And uh, we've got the stuff. <clears throat> we just need to assemble it. And we need lots of hands to build the float. Uh, that'll be happening tomorrow, 8.30, a lot of fun. I hope that you can join us for that. Come on over to Dave's. Uh, give myself or Markman Heck a call. Uh, if you want, need to know any more details. For the, for the next week, we have the parade, the chili dinner, and then the concert. That's on Saturday. And then Sunday afternoon again, we have the concert again. So we need cookies for that. We need bakers. We need servers for the chili dinner. And we need singers. Uh, we do this thing where we get on the float. We are the angel choir. And we sing the hallelujahs and the rejoicing with the announcement to the shepherds, so we need shepherds on our float, and we need people to walk in the parade and pass out these invitations. Now, near you on your seat, you should find one of these. I want to encourage you to take these with you. There are more in the back, more in the entranceway, and pass these out to invite people to come. This all, we're also going to have a raffle, and so this is, uh, becomes a raffle ticket when people come, and and uh, so get these out, invite your people to come. We filled this place to capacity. I think we had 400 or so people in here for the first night show on Saturday and uh, almost that on Sunday afternoon show. But please uh, take it as a challenge, as a hospitality challenge to get these out to people. And you can bring them along, give them to friends and family that you may see today. We also need, for the parade, candy. Uh, we throw out candy to the community as they gather for the parade, and we need to start uh, building up our supply of candy for that. So I want to ask you to bring that along uh, when, uh, like this Sunday, I guess, this Sunday or the course of the next week as we're preparing for that. I think that's uh, all uh, on that. Uh, tomorrow, decorating here at 1. Uh, this place is going to get covered with snow, if I understand right. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, prepare this space with snow and scenery for the concert tomorrow at 1. Uh, so if, after you do your Black Friday shopping early in the morning, get a 
uh, get a stiff cup of coffee and come on uh, over here and help with the setup. Especially Jade? Yeah? Oh, because it's her birthday tomorrow. Oh, that's a great time then to celebrate, Jade. That'd be a great way to celebrate your birthday. Congratulations on your birthday. Yes, fantastic. So tomorrow morning at 8.30, you can help with the float. 1 o'clock, you can come here, sort out the rest of your stuff, uh, and uh, hope you can help with those things. Um, if we need more help on the float on Saturday, we'll let you know. Um, oh, we have gift bags. We have gift bags for our college students. Um, if we missed you, please let Loren know. Uh, we apologize for that, but college students, we have gift bags for you. And if uh, parents, if your students aren't here, please look on the table out there. They're all, they all have a name on them, and uh, they're loaded with all kinds of goodies that we hope are helpful and yummy. So grab your bag. This morning, what we want to do here with our, the, the time that we have is to share events events where God showed up, events where God deepened your appreciation for people in your life, people or persons. Uh, and so I've given you a sentence as a beginning and uh, want to have you come up and just share the event and how that deepened your appreciation uh, for, for God, for your faith, for that person, whatever. So that's the plan. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, and this is from John Paul. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Okay. John Paul told me about this. And uh, looking back on, you want to come up here, John? All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, I know you're very shy. But uh, come on up here. And looking back on 2016, an event where God deepened my appreciation and gratitude for, and who is it you were grateful for right there? Um, firemen. Yeah, the firemen. Police officers, too. Police officers, too? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Because when I fell on the, um, where were you? Kent Trail. Yeah, you fell on the Kent Trail and yep. hurt yourself. Yep. And then who, who did you call? Um, nine one one. Right. Yep. And and what did they do? How did they get you? Um, the fire department um, drove right on the trail and found me laying down on the trail and put me in a fire truck and bring me over to AMR ambulance to the parking lot. And, and, and where did they bring you in the ambulance? Metro Hospital. And, and then were you okay? Yeah. yeah. So, but you were real grateful for those firemen, huh? Yeah, I wanted the nurses to give me some coffee. That's why I wanted to go to a hospital. All right. <laughs> So, but they were there looking out for you when you needed them, right? Yes. Awesome. Give yes. five. Give five. Thank you. All right. Thanks, John. Thank you, All right. Jim. Good job. Thank you. All right. So, anybody else have an event that happened to them where they grew in appreciation? So, we'll open it up here and uh, come on up. All right. No. We, here comes Elida. You're going to what? I have to go first, otherwise I'll chicken those. All right, all right. This, this is not my thing. But anyway, I had a lot of transitions in my year for 2016, as you all well know, in the passing of Gerald. And then uh, with a broken leg. And I just want to thank the church family for being so supportive, so helpful, and bringing meals, sending cards and being such a blessing. And through it all, I could really see the hand of God and grace that he sustained in all those difficult times. And I can really testify that God is faithful and he's always with us. Amen. If I get choked up, it won't be the first time on Thanksgiving that I ever have. I, re I remember before. But uh, our reading in Genesis, Genesis this week was Genesis 48. 
and the verse that caught my eye was Israel, <coughs> Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face again. And now God has allowed me to see your children too. <coughs> so some of you, but not all of you, know that uh, we've been estranged from our oldest son for the last four years. We have a grandson who will be two in February, and we've never even seen him. It's been rough on us. But about three months ago, Josh called me up one day and asked me to meet him for lunch. Well, we talked about everything except personal issues, and I did most of the listening. And uh, we met about four times, talking a lot about nothing, but each time I could tell he was becoming more at ease in my presence. And uh, last week he even called his brother and had lunch with him. And when I met him last week for lunch, he said he wanted to come to our house for Thanksgiving dinner. So uh, we said yes, and hopefully this afternoon we'll uh, reunite with him and uh, he, the Lord's just been kind of tearing some of the walls down that he's built up. And uh, we still need prayer because he's just coming by himself. And uh, But uh, we're easing, like through Genesis, we're easing in to complete reconciliation. And... Uh, we're pretty grateful for that and uh, hope that someday soon uh, Mary and I will be able to see our grandchild and uh, be reunited with our whole family again. As a lot of you know, I've been suffering with issues, not knowing exactly what they were, knowing that it was cancer, but not knowing where it was coming from or where it was going to. And yesterday, I had to go to Ann Arbor um, Medical Center, and they had done a PET scan, and they had done a bone scan. and. Somewhere in my mind, I told myself that it was going to be bone cancer because the type of cancer that I have, they said, is very rare. It is not found where they found it. And I was so thankful that he said that probably what I will need to do will be have surgery and probably chemotherapy and maybe something else. I'm not sure. But... I'm really thankful to everybody who's been praying for me, and I thank God that he has been my will to hang on to things that have been hard to go through. But I now know that what the problem is can be taken care of, and I hope that you will continue to pray for me as it will be another week before I will know anything as far as what and where they're going to do it. So thank you so much for your prayers.
Last month, when my brother Tom passed away, we were covered with love and support from Pathway, from Loren Schaefer and Pastor Jim coming to the hospital, many people at the visitation and funeral, to cards and uh, Facebook condolences. I was able, with Scott's help, to talk at the funeral mass and tell everyone the blessings Tom brought as a person with Down syndrome to my family and everyone he met in his life. I couldn't have done this without knowing my Pathway people who were supporting me in prayers and following Pathway's example of celebrating life that God has given us. Throughout this year, I am so thankful that I saw God show up in my brother-in-law. Um, my sister and brother-in-law have been struggling with infertility for the last six years, and he was never open to any idea of somebody else's baby being theirs. And God changed his heart, and now they're in the process of adopting. And they had their very first home visit yesterday, and everything went great. And he's counting the days until he can have a baby in his arms, and God just showed up. I'm so thankful for that. Uh, this past spring, um, Aaron, my oldest, uh, was in the hospital for a couple nights, and uh, I just want to be just want to be thankful for um, Pastor Jim. You were busy with a conference those days, and uh, you showed up every day to pray for us and uh, just to give us support. So, just thankful for that. And uh, just thankful to see how um, I can see Aaron's faith um, grow and glow so brightly during that time and how he just trusted in God at that time. So I um, just want to say thank you again. One more. This has nothing to do with this past year. It has to do with the past 10 years. I came here looking for a family because my own family was estranged. I found it here. I joined this church. I have been so thankful for all of you who are always praying for each other and for taking our, our joys to God and bringing him in our lives. I want to thank all of you for accepting me as I am. And also, I am now back with my family, which God opened that door again, so. Thank you very much. Um, praise God. Uh, as we share these things where we see God in our lives, uh, we give glory to God. There's this thing that we talk about here at Pathway, the, the vertical dimension. Uh, we concentrate on that through our readings, uh, listening, talking and listening, uh, prayer, reading the passages, and, and then we do this thing with each other where we worship together, 
we pray for each other, we lift each other up, we try to memorize scripture together, we try to read through the words together. We come here together to worship. And there's these two elements, the vertical and the horizontal, that we continue to uh, try to grow in as we walk on this path to a Jesus way. And Steve, I want to thank you for your leadership in directing us in both directions and causing us to pursue growth and to not, not be content with um, where, where we are, because God, we know, loves us as we are, uh, but he also wants to push us uh, to grow more and to become the people that he's ordained for us to be and gifted us to be. And so we hope that together we can continue on this journey, growing both in our relationship with God and in our relationship with each other. Let's close uh, by singing. I want to have the praise team back up here. Uh, after, uh, while we're doing this, we're going to take an offering. And the idea here was that if you had a designated place you wanted to direct those funds to go with your Thanksgiving offering, to put that on an envelope, uh, anything that is undesignated, uh, we'll put to our benevolence fund uh, that helps people out, called our Pay It Forward Fund. And uh, so as we're closing in song, uh, the baskets will be passed so you can participate with your offering. I'm going to read again the words that Christy uh, 
read to us earlier, Psalm 95. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Amen? Amen. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.